Welcome back, everybody, to a very, very exciting From Screen to Shelf episode. Today, we are starting a newer segment that was actually recommended to me. Shout out to one of the most wholesome people in this universe, the person courtesy over there off of the Discord server. Um, a lot of people over there know that I'm a massive Chucky fan. I really just recently just put out all those different types of Chucky videos in anticipation for season three, part two. Um, I know person is agrees with me, but I do highly, really, really think that in the world of kind of bringing something back and then pushing forward with it, Chucky is one of, if not the best TV shows on TV right now. I don't consume a lot of like cable TV or really TV shows in general, but for airing on sci-fi in USA, I do genuinely believe that Chucky is one of the best things that you can tune into right now. And it has revitalized Chucky as a character, it has made a lot of things make sense. So what we're going to be doing is I am going to be doing an analysis, a breakdown, what I'm thinking's coming, if I really even have any of those thoughts, dissect the episode, what, how I feel about it, more or less kind of rant and review the episode, and then kind of dissect it and start some dialogue with you guys as it goes on. Right. And then probably at the end, um, I always buy all these seasons as I come out. So, of course, I'll still do yet another Blu-ray review for it, but I'll rank the seasons um, or just review the season in general and probably even rank the seasons. Um, so far, I am in the min minority, but I season two was my favorite. But after last night's gorgeous, beautiful, spectacular, even a Marvel Avengers Endgame style event, not really, but a great episode, a great return to form for Chucky for the next half of season three. So we kind of pick up after Chucky had his whole little tirade. Of course, spoilers, yeah, that goes without saying. Chucky had his whole little tirade during kind of like the little um, meeting, get together party that they held at the White House where you had Jake, Devin and Lexi kind of doing their thing. You know, the beginning of season three, they're taken in by their teacher from season one. And, you know, Chucky comes back and that's still one of my favorite scenes in the series whenever he kind of more or less FaceTimes them. Amazing, amazingly well done. Um, so the teacher gets taken down. They're kind of on their own fending for themselves. Jake and Devin are kind of embedded in this little relationship. It's absolutely adorable. Lexi is still kind of like my most, I don't know, like emotionally tugging character. I, I think she has some of the best character development in the entire series, but also at the same exact time. I think that she can just be downright awful. <laughs> Season one, I wanted her to be taken out. Uh, she's still with us. Um, so she kind of starts trying to infiltrate the White House after they find out that Chucky, that's where he's at. So then after Chucky performs kind of like his little cinematic event for taking people out um, with the president, you know, trying to secure the place, there's all these deaths happening and everything like that. And so Devin Sawa, um, rest his soul he's been this this after this episode this will be his fourth death yeah fourth death in the series um so it's amazingly well done so we pick up um and chucky finds out towards the end of season uh part one of season three that he is dying um he even goes to a little bit of a doctor like a it's i think it's, i think they even refer to him as like a dambala doctor or something like that i could be completely making that up but um in this one they more or less do and so um, Chucky's dying and that's where we pick up so you're kind of seeing a dying Chucky um, of course I don't, I don't really think this will actually work out that way um, especially they already have a new movie that was announced for um, Chucky by Don Mancini so you pick up you're just going through the ropes it's pretty humorous this and that and then you just pick up with uh, Devin and Jake and their little charades and so we kind of just go on this little adventure especially you have I always forget the character's name in the White House because I'm definitely more attached to, attached to Devin, Jake, and Lexi. But you have them in this kind of little... Um, you have Chucky attached to the, the the president's youngest son. And, you know, he knows Chucky talks, the weird things that he says, and he's also still manipulating Lexi's little sister from season one. Um, so you also have the older brother that Lexi's kind of trying to be entangled with, but she also really has more ulterior motives. I need to get in that white house to take Chucky out is more or less kind of where the dialogue is going or where, where, where the events are going. So this one really just kind of keeps taking it up a notch. The gore factor, what they allowed them to do on TV today just kind of surprises me with the censorship and the networks. But of course I think there was a sense of scope that they had kind of found out for where they were going to be placing Chucky all the way pre, you know, pilot. 
and they knew what they wanted to do and everything because this definitely has to be one of the gorier episodes I've seen. Um, Devin Sawa had his fourth death in the series, uh, just to count it down. Devin's dad, he played him with the beard and everything. Then Devin's uncle, or not Devin, Jake's Jake's dad and Jake's uncle. And then you had him as um, the the priest in season two. That's my favorite role of his so far. And he gets the goriest death <laughs> in the entire um, series so far. That was absolutely a spectacle. And it kind of makes me wonder, like, I, you know, because it, it's being very mysterious. I believe it's something along the lines of like something of pure evil. And maybe because they they do preface in one of the bits, there's a line where they say, like, there's a lot of evil that has happened in those walls. A lot of lives have been taken. So maybe the president, you know, starts to kind of more or less resurrect Chucky. That's kind of where I, I, I've kind of been thinking since he got sick before part two aired. Um, of course, everybody's perception of who's evil is different, but whenever you break it as a more of a matter of fact type of manner with how they broke that down with the amount of deaths and the amount of decisions that have caused lives to be taken have been made inside that wall. That was a genius line that was really foreshadowing a lot for the future. So that's how I feel about that part. Um, the Lexi and the older brother or the older son of the presidents. I just really don't care much for that dynamic. You know what I mean? Cool character development. Jake and Devin have their thing going on. So you definitely need to let Lexi have her whole shenanigans and everything like that transpire. Um, Jake and Devin, I feel like, you know, there, there's something big coming here. Um, just, just something really massive. There was kind of a little bit of a teaser, a little bit more of an insight during the Halloween Horror Nights from Universal last year. They had a giant Chucky. And um, people have been kind of thinking that Chucky's going to go like turbo mode and get like super huge. Maybe he just starts going on a huge tirade and this is just more like a little like pivotal plot point or like season kind of dip to keep you invested as it goes through the motions of the season um, for the whole Dambala aspect. So I'm definitely looking forward to how they're going to be progressing that because I do think that he found his ultimate evil maybe in the president and that's why he kind of more or less ended up at the White House. Um, the doctor scene in this one pretty much killed me. Uh, whenever they were like, you know, the the Hippocratic Oath or whatever it was about, like, I can't release client privilege. And it, even they, they said that somewhere on his website that his only oath is to Dambala. Just goofy. See, and that, that's why Chucky is one of my absolute favorite things out there is it's just so zany, so funny. The, the comedy can be pretty upfront, pretty serious. Um, and just sometimes it can just be very subtle. It's just like towards the end, right before the presidential scene with uh, Chucky and the president, there's a part where Chucky's watching TV. He goes through all of these little horror movies, but he gets to Megan and I just, I was rolling and he was, he says something along the lines like that damn M3 gun. And it just, it's great. <laughs> it's awesome. I really, really did love that. Uh, the Chucky show is literally the thing I look forward to all the time. It does suck that it's only going to be three more episodes. But this season really has been packed extremely tight. I'm still not sure if this is my favorite season. I'll have to see how the season finale plays off. My favorite season finale so far has been season ones. I think season two was just as good, but just on a pure scope. And like I was like, wow, they really did that was definitely season one. It was different. It was cool. It was crazy. And I really didn't like um, Jake's cousin in that season at all. He was the most miserable dude in the entire show, even over Lexi. And I was just so happy to see him being taken out. So um, I think we're, we're, we're in for an absolutely good ride. I really don't have much predictions for how this has, is going to go because Don Mancini has really done an excellent job of this series so far of keeping it fresh, keeping me in interested. I only know a couple of things, whenever, or a few things whenever I, go, I tune in and watch this show. I'm going to see Jake. I'm going to see Devin. I'm going to see Lexi and I'm going to see Chucky and somebody's going to die at Chucky's hands. Those are the only things that have been guaranteed. And it's not like to say, I'm not trying to say, or say it's the most mysterious show. Oh, it's just brilliant genius writing. It's great, right? Um, there, there, it does get a little cliche at some points. If you follow the Chucky movies pretty closely, um, or at least Chucky cliche, I guess you could say, but more or less how it ends up kind of just playing out just feels very organic, very natural, very, twisty and stuff like that like i never really expect like the way that he does some of these kills like at the for the season three part one finale with the whole like party scene and the chandelier 
I really didn't see that coming. I thought it'd be a little bit more of a spectacle, but of course I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Especially with the way that the, the water flows inside of that one. So I'm probably going to have a little bit more to talk about, about part two, because there was so much that happened in part one. Um, it was really just a great, like, Hey, let's get back in the groove. Right. Um, Devin Sawa died again. I'm excited already for season four to see whoever he plays. That's literally one of my favorite tropes in the entire series so far is who Mr. Sawa plays in any of these, uh, any of these seasons. So that'll be great. I think it'll be really, really, really awesome that um, to see the character development between Jake and Devin. That has always been really nice. And to see ultimately, I guess, where Lexi goes. So um, I think it's going to really pick up and there's going to be a lot to dissect, right? There's going to be a ton to dissect in this one. Um, even like even the president's wife was acting super weird, which I really don't know what to make of it. But she just felt so off, you know? Like whenever the president is to come back full circle before wrapping up, whenever the president is like kneeling before his little son or his his, uh, smallest son, youngest son, he's like, you know, you can tell he's genuinely terrified of all these things that have been happening in the White House. And they even say something along the lines of it being more or less like he's he's like the, the intermediary president, you know, very neutral on everything, if I remember right, from part one. And so, like, he's there, and she just ushers the child away, doesn't even ask if he's doing well. I don't know why that scene spoke out so much to me. Like, you can clearly tell that your husband is extremely distraught and in a lot of pain and going through the motions, but you don't even stop and ask him how he's doing. I don't know if that was just kind of maybe me thinking too much, but I think there's a little bit more to that scene than what meets the eye. So, sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the season season three part two premiere or continuation i guess more or less let me know what you thought let me know if you maybe you have some more thoughts on where it's headed where you want to see it headed anything like that and please don't forget to like comment and subscribe as always i'll see you guys next from screen to shelf video thank you guys so much